Hello, I'm Dale Horan and I'm here at Lampa Manufacturing and I've been asked to give a little overview of the EPA testing process that we go through to get a furnace certified. Uh, we go down to Middleton, uh, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Madison. When we get down there, uh, we start out early in the morning and you have to do a pre-burn. Now a pre-burn is to get the furnace all up to temp and everything so there's, you know, you're not uh, skewing any of the data. We start out by uh, checking the moisture of every single piece of wood and we measure the height, the width, and the length of every piece. Each piece of wood is weighed to a thousandth of a pound and uh, we, have to, we have to have 10 pounds of wood for every cubic foot of space in the firebox. So our firebox is 3.9 cubic feet, so we need 39 pounds of wood, plus or minus 10%. So we can go down to 35.6 pounds. So we would go to 35.6 pounds of wood, and we would fire up, usually about 7.30 in the morning, uh, and we would run the furnace wide open until the last hour before you're done, and then you have to set it where you're gonna actually run your test. So, and in the meantime, while that's running, uh, we would, uh, they would get the test load of wood ready. And again, now for the test load, every piece of wood has to have the moisture tested at five different locations in that piece of wood. And the probes have to go in uh, a minimum of three quarters of an inch into the wood. And in addition to, and, and now each piece, each of those uh, moistures is recorded on a document. You also have to measure the height, width, and length of each piece and the weight of each piece. All of this is documented on a, on a sheet that has to get submitted. <clears throat> when you get down to 10% of the weight of the test load, now the whole furnace is sitting on a scale, so as it burns, the weight drops down. When you get down to 10%, that's you've got 10% of coals left. Now 10% of coals, there's really no weight to coals, so that's really a big pile of coals. And so once you get down to 10%, you have to be ready, and they can't, cannot let it go even an ounce below 10 pounds or 10%. So when it's there, they, it's mass chaos. They have to uh, get the furnace, get the coals pulled forward, get the wood uh, loaded in, and start all the uh, data collection systems. And now you're sitting there watching the clock and every minute it's taking a recording and you're watching up at a tunnel up by the ceiling to see is there any smoke at all and usually when you first load you're going to get some smoke and really a lot of its water vapor because you're driving moisture off the wood but usually after about a minute minute and a half there's nothing but now you're sitting there for the next six to eight hours watching minute by minute it's not hour by hour you're actually watching minute by minute by minute. And it seems to go on forever. And there's four categories of burns that you have to hit for the EPA. You have to get your max burn, which is where you're running the furnace, absolutely full out, putting out as much heat as possible. Um, that, that's fairly easy to hit because you're running wide open. Then you have to hit uh, what's category one, which is the low burn. And for us, ours, we did uh, an alternative test method, which pretty much every manufacturer has to do for an indoor wood furnace. And so we have to, our, our low burn has to be uh, under 35% of the max burn. So you're sitting there every minute watching your BTU, average BTU output, minute by minute. And usually during the burn, for the first while, you're, you're above the average, and then towards the end, you start dropping down. And so you just, you're just hoping you're going to get down there. And uh, then for the second category two, you have to be over 35%, but under 53% of the maximum burn. And then for category three, you have to be over 53 and under 76%. And so you have to come within these categories and set the furnace to run. So needless to say, um, you can only get one category done in a day. And the lab, test lab, has told me that uh, they don't believe any manufacturer has completed their certification testing with less than 10 burns. So if you have a category and you go over the limit, for example, we had some where there was too much water vapor and we went over the limit, it blocked the filters. Uh, so we went over the limit. <coughs> you have to average, you have to, then you have to do another burn and you have to average those burns. 
and if that comes over the 0 0.014 then you have the option to do a third burn and then you can throw one cat one of the burns out which is what we had to do because we had that one bad one by the time we did the second one then we were in great condition uh, we had two really good clean burns so our numbers came out well so we ended up having three weeks of testing roughly thirty thousand dollars per week so we spent about ninety thousand uh, dollars to get the re re um, recertifying of the furnace that had already been certified the first time we did it it cost us over two hundred thousand so recertifying costs us ninety thousand and you have to do this every five years so that's the process that we went through and the process that pretty much every manufacturer has to go through to get EPA certified for these wood furnaces. Once again, uh, the Vapor Fire 100 uh, is still the cleanest burning wood furnace uh, that's sold in America and no one has come close to beating us. We came in 32% cleaner than the EPA's uh, mandate, so we're quite, quite happy.